Greetings, unsettled souls! Go! Uh, welcome aboard, friends. I want to make sure as you uh, trickle in here to the correct views, I, your humble host, Sam DeGangie, I want to make sure that you realize what I'm not about to do. I'm not about to start talking about sustainability and the man's warming the planet. We all need to be sustainable and limit our carbon footprint. I don't care if my carbon footprint looks like a steel-toed boot worn by Goliath. It makes no difference to me whatsoever. What does matter to me, though, is that a lot of this is being pushed. We need to eat bugs so that we don't raise cows. We need to walk two miles here to get a candy bar because our car is destroying the environment. You probably should walk, but you get what I'm saying. Um, another one of these things is that we all need to live in these tiny little bubbles so that we don't use as much electricity or as much gas. I don't give a rat's ass about any of that. First of all, I have followed the science enough to know that man is not warming the planet. What did I say? I said that man-made global warming is a lie. That's an absolute truth. Feel free to put a house beat behind it. And loop it. Man-made. Hey, it's been done before. It's not happening. Okay, so I'm not promoting any of that garbage. But what I am doing is I've been told that one of the reasons that people tend to listen to my show is that I don't just do the news, as most people do. I find interesting and odd stories that you may not find otherwise. Now, I do like this because it was it, it shows ultimate ingenuity and the city was against it, and the people that built it won, saying that there are certain rights which the city just needs to stay the hell out of. And for that reason, I love it. Uh, this is... Oh, yeah, I never had these guys. Atlas Obscura. For sale! Boston's a skinny, a spite house. What the hell? Check this out. This slim 19th century home, just 10 feet wide, is seeking new owners who aren't afraid to get close. I guess not. And again, and let me zoom in on the actual video here. This is kind of cool. The Clarendon House at 44 Hole Street in Boston, uh, their north end neighborhood, has handsome exposed brick and a bathroom with vivid blue tiles. It's good that it's made out of brick because it is a Democrat city, so you're going to be getting shot at. So that's helpful. It boasts a lush group. Plus, they've only got a 10-foot window. And, you know, they shoot sideways like an idiot. So you have a good chance of living in this house. It boasts a lush green uh, private yard and an enviable views from the roof deck. Charming amenities for sure, but not the most notable things about this house. It's narrow, really, really narrow. Blink and you'll miss it narrow. Stretch your arms and brush both walls narrow. It's so narrow that previous owners had to saw their box spring in half to coax it upstairs and even then managed to wedge it in their bedroom by shoving it through a window. The svelte structure is known to locals as the skinny house, and it's up for sale for $1.2 million. So if you're an idiot, it, it's a cool thing to own. I get it. I get it. I do. I, I'm not, the, the aesthetic is not lost on me. The home is reportedly a spite house, a building designed to stymie another construction project or bug neighbors by blocking sunlight or stamping out their view. I love it. Rebel. I love it. Rebel. For a reason. I mean, don't just rebel for the hell of it. But when you're being trampled on, your rights are being abused, of course you should rebel. You can quote me. Many spite houses were constructed in the days when building codes were lax, urban journalist John Metcalf once reported to the city lab. And so their underlying contempt and animosity has been grandfathered into the modern landscape. These odd little properties are likely to be found in old neighborhoods where the street grid was once jagged and might still be irregular today. The origins of this particular spite house are obscure, the Boston Globe reported in 2005, but local legend describes it as the result of two brothers tussling over a slice of land. One reportedly, it says, went off to fight in the Civil War and came back to find that his brother had blown through their inheritance and built himself a house on property that had passed to them by their father. The prodigal son! The un an unfriendly act left only a slice of land, which the builder thought would be too small for a second dwelling. Undetoured, the enterprise... Oh, this is a different This is a different house than the one I thought it was, but it's still cool. The one I did was a, a one-finger salute to the city, but this is different. Undetoured, the enterprising returning brother simply squeezed a house into the remaining sliver. That was apparently the first irritation of the house that stands, iteration, excuse me, of the house that stands today. 
which has been stretched by renovations over the years. Today, at its roomiest, the two-bedroom, four-story home measures a bit more than 10 feet wide and 30 feet long. In a city where there are many narrow lots, this far exceeds the norm, Alan Lipsy, executive director of the Boston Landmarks Commission, told The Globe. As far as we know, it is the narrowest house in Boston. Some of the walls nip in. In places, the house's walls are just a little over six feet apart. When architects plan to build the new bed, two-bedroom apartments in Boston, they're often designing living room spaces that are around 13 feet wide, which comfortably fit a couch and a TV unit, says Aaron Hughes, an architect and a senior associate at Stantec. Ten feet would be pinching it, he adds, but it's smartly designed, and it can definitely work. And uh, you can read the rest of the article here, but I do want you to see some images here. Passing from one room to the other often requires a flight of stairs since the floor is stacked. So, you know, there you go. Interesting story, and for those of you that wonder why I covered it, there'll be tons of stories posted today about bombings and death and murder. Fear not. Get a hold of me, though, at the correct views at hotmail.com, please. I would very much like to hear from you.